Hi, it's Tabby, and this week I am sculpting on top of an 8 ounce sesame seed jar. And this shape inspired me to make Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. I'm really excited about this one. Sorry to cut my intro short, but I have toddlers and they don't like to stay out of the same room as me for longer than like 20 seconds. So here I start with a wire armature. I'm trying to make some legs. Um, this jar is essentially going to be like the torso for Howl. And uh, spoiler alert, I end up having to remake the legs like three times. Um, I should have done more here. I thought that that would have been enough, but um, as soon as I stand it up, you can see how wobbly it is. And I should have taken that into account and not thought that that would be fine. <laughs> um, armature is important, guys. So uh, don't mind me being weird here. Um, so this is like the first set of legs. And I don't know how, but I always mess up the measurement of the legs. And I keep having to add wire and stuff. I, I drill it and hold it in place. But here it is wiggly. I, I go pretty fast through this. But um, yeah, I'll just speed through all of this for a while. Um, this is me poorly making the legs. Obviously way too thin for the scale of his body. I do want to show the process of me messing up though. Just so that I can show people what not to do, I guess. Um, also, just being like honest in the learning process. Because some people think that like talent is a real thing. But it's not. People just practice. I've been sculpting since I was in high school and I'm 30 now so that's it's been a minute. Right here I'm making a mistake of using too thin of clay. Um, I thought that it would help with the weight of the jar on the spindly little legs and stuff but um, when you make it too thin it tends to crack as you'll see after I bake it and that's part of why the um, jar fails the first time. Here after I fill in that hole I am building up the folds in his shirt. I am uh, using the idea of Howl from the specific opening scene where he swoops up uh, Sophie and he's walking with her down that cobblestone street. I spent quite a while making all the puffs and folds in his shirt and I do end up keeping the shape of the shirt how it is. Um, when I sculpt it, it does crack after the first break in between where the folds are but I just have to add more clay and some bacon bond because like I said it has to be a certain thickness or it will crack. Uh, with the pants, I do show this, I basically do this process three times, but I put some folds in the pants and I try and just make it, the wrinkles and stuff, give it some detail. Um, the, this is the little puff thing <clears throat> on the top where it like ruches, I don't know, is that the right word? So here are the cracks where I made it too thin, this leg cracked, so that was the first fail. So I put bacon bond in the cracks and then I shove some super sculpey in there and I just thicken it up. I decided to also cut his leg off and reattach it in a not bent back manner because I was still trying to salvage this leg. I use more of the bacon bond and shoving more clay in it method. Moving on to the shoulders, I try and get them in the right position and add up and build up so that it actually looks like a shoulder, all nice and rounded. I use ultralight here for his arm. Uh, I wanted it to be smooth for uh, being able to sculpt on top of easily and also light. This is also my first attempt at his feet, which are ridiculously too small, and I did a bad job, but I tried to do this uh, like three times. Same process, I, I build it up with aluminum foil, and I put clay over it, and blah blah blah. 
For his collar, I am going to use a strip of cause clay and I want it to be flexible so that I can uh, handle it and stuff and it won't break off. And cause clay is a foam based clay and it actually works really well with Sculpey products. So I use them together all the time. I guess I baked him at some point in there and um, now I'm adding in some Super Sculpey over his arms. The puffy sleeve, um, it, it looks a little bit awkward for quite a while, but I also made his arm way too long and it wasn't something that I noticed until it was too late. So we got a long arm, but I'll deal with it. Also, there's only one arm because uh, the other arm is supposed to be hidden. I had the bright idea that that would like reduce the weight, but it kind of just made him more uneven and like lean towards the one arm. Here I'm sculpting him a teeny tiny dainty wrist uh, that <laughs> is way too small. And I also sculpt a fist here. Um, I do go back and I make this way bigger because my perspective sucks. So things take me a few tries just to get them right for size. more folds and wrinkles on the pants and details and stuff. I think at this point I had also tried to thicken up the legs a little bit with some more clay. You can see where it's fresh there, but I'm just like adding on to a disaster really. For his shoes, I do go through and I make uh, shoelaces and like the crease and whatever in the design. Uh, the, I'm glad that I actually did have to remake these a couple times because my first few attempts are pretty lame and but the end shoes actually I did do a good job so. This is my first attempt at making his coat. Um, I do realize soon that it is too heavy to hold up its own weight and it starts breaking. Um, I do uh, also, you will notice the water bottle for a while because it is helping it stand up because the little noodle legs here is uh, not able to hold the weight of all this. This coat ends up pretty heavy, honestly. Um, but here's me just trying to put it together the first time. I end up giving, it up, uh, giving up and taking it off because it starts breaking off. And I remake it with a wire mesh in between it, which was like a genius idea because it worked perfectly. I, I could like stand up the coat on its own and everything because it, it's pretty strong. And um, I this coat is about like ends up being about a pound and a half and this jar totals like three pounds, which is pretty heavy for a jar, honestly. This is the heaviest jar that I've ever made. And, but I really love this coat. Um, I end up having to like sew the mesh together too to hold the weight. Uh, when I bend it, it won't stay together with just the clay. It keeps, um, like the clay keeps tearing and stuff. It doesn't hold its own weight. So I actually go in with wires and I twist them um, through like the top of it and uh, I do it for the sleeves as well. I like attach it, everything underneath the clay with wire. I use more mesh to make a sleeve and I cover it in clay and attach it with more wire and uh, blend it in. I take another strip of cos clay and I attach it to create the collar for his coat. Um, I really like how this coat ends up looking. The inside of it looks like crap, but that's fine because you don't see the inside when it's done. And um, I do quite a bit of like detail work off camera and whatever. I'm just trying to get the right shapes of the sleeves here and stuff. I wire these together because uh, the sleeve is supposed to be floppy but with the wire in it, it kind of just like sticks out so I make it pretend. 
Here I am um, creating some wrinkles and folds in the coat. This is how I put him in. I tried to brace his legs, but it obviously did not work and they bent and they broke. Um, the, the supports slid out and here I am just trying to reattach it again, which was a stupid idea. I, I don't know why. I'm super fast forwarding through this because I tried epoxy sculpt and it failed again. It fell off the table. Here I am uh, fixing the coat, the top of the coat. Um, I use epoxy sculpt to uh, build it back up because it just smushed down a little bit. So I cut off the parts that are smushed and I rebuild it. I finally gave up on those stupid freaking legs and I'm rebuilding them now and I'm doing this kind of like in super fast forward but I want you to see the process and how I did it a little bit different. Um, I just reinforced more with tape, I did more wire and then I went in and I made it um, like the whole thing in aluminum foil. like so that it could hold its own weight and everything was taped <laughs> super good. Uh, I just made sure that it was really, really sturdy this time because I was about to give up on him. The, this jar actually took me about like six months to make. I don't know if you noticed, but I was wearing long sleeves when I started this video and it's already fall again. So uh, yeah, it's been about like six months. I'm just adding and adding some aluminum foil and tape and wire until I um, am absolutely sure that it's strong because it is very heartbreaking to keep having to rebuild. All of these weird wires sticking out of his feet, uh, the ones going down are going to go into the wood and then I'm also just trying to create wires um, and aluminum supports for the feet so that he will stand and not tip. So just going above and beyond with this last set of legs. baking barn for adhesive and I go in with a fresh sheet of clay finally and I just cover all of his legs in clay. This is his last set of shoes. Um, they're a lot more proportional to his legs, thankfully. And it's got a heel, so I'm just uh, taking away clay and adding it where it needs it. I'm fast forward through uh, doing the legs again, but it's the same thing, just creating the folds and wrinkles in the leg. But look at him, actually standing up on his own legs without tipping, no water bottle. So this is where it starts getting successful and I'm grateful. I am finally ready to sculpt on top of the wood little platform thing and I'm going to make those cobblestones. Now that his body is baked and standing, it's finally time for his head. I take a piece of aluminum foil and I attach it to a cork that specifically fits in the top of this jar. And um, I use wire to attach it and some tape. 
and it takes me a few tries but I get his head on there. I use more bacon bond to adhere to it and I'm using Living Doll for the face because it is great for detail work. This is my third time using it and I'm finally getting used to the way that it works and it's just so soft and it you can get like the slightest details out of it. It's good clay. I map out his facial structure before I actually start sculpting so that his features are in the right spot. I start with the chin and I build that up and I just try and get the right face shape. How has a long pointy anime nose and trying to get this right where it's like the itty bittiest um, like non-existent drawing nose. The lips were kind of hard um, because in pictures they're like a line because <laughs> anime drawing is uh, very 2D and I'm trying to create a 3D sculpture here. So I use a lot of references from different angles and this is also like my first attempt at anime eyes and I'm really happy with how these turned out actually. It's finally time for ears and I use like a half moon shape of clay and I use progressively smaller ball styluses to get the shape. I didn't make it too detailed since this is still referenced off of an anime drawing. I think this is one of my favorite face sculpts so far. It's finally time to paint. I start with some white gesso and I do like three or four coats of this for where his skin tone and his uh, white shirt will be. I paint his shoes black. I'm really just blocking out where colors will go. I also hand mix all of my skin tones and, and this took me two tries, but I think it turns out the right tone. I started with a very fine paintbrush and started doing the outlines and the black lines of the eyes. Then start in with a pencil to map out where I want the irises and um, the pupils to be and everything. I do use uh, colored pencils. This is my first time using it, but it does give me the clean lines that I want for where the eyes are. And after I finalize all that, I make it more opaque with some acrylic paints. It's starting to look pretty. I use a dark gray as a, a dry brush for the shoes. 
I do add the black lines where the details would be in the drawing itself and I try and just create a good 3D representation. Um, the inside of the coat obviously looks like crap still as, long, as well as like the back of Howl but since it won't be seen it's not a huge deal. So I paint the coat. I'm really happy with how the coat turns out. Instead of using a fine tip brush, I actually use a fine tip pen to do all the black lines on house coat. I use a dark red for a base in these cobblestones and it's kind of like a brick red and then I use varying shades of brown for washes and dry brushing. I'll need some hair so I take some pale yellow acrylic yarn and I use um, a cat brush to brush it out and then I use my straightener to on the lowest setting to straighten this. What just that one? Like I said, the back of them looks like crap, so don't mind that. But here I am uh, gluing on these pieces of hair with uh, fabric glue. He gets a nice little haircut. This shade of yarn is way too pale for the actual color that his hair is supposed to be so I go over with um, soft pastels and a paintbrush and I change the, the last color. details that Hal needs are his jewelry so I sculpt some little gems for him out of some super sculpey and then I make a mold and I use UV resin and some alcohol inks to create little gems for him. I use a teensy bit of epoxy sculpt to attach some gold wire to the back of these gems. I also sculpt two tiny little gems on top of his necklace gem. I'm not really a jewelry maker, but they do the job. Um, I also use epoxy sculpt to finish the bottom of this and hide it because I did still struggle with house legs, even though they do hold him up now and they're strong. It did bend in sculpting, so I had to um, compromise and he is walking uphill and there's foam underneath uh, to make it angled uh, in the right way so he's standing straight up. So I just used the epoxy sculpt and then varying shades of brown to repaint it so that it looks like wood. It's time to put in his earrings and put on his necklace and he's ready. pretty happy with how Hal turned out. He isn't perfect, but I like him. <laughs> He's got a pretty little face. I think I did that pretty good. If you want to support me further, I will leave links down below for my Etsy and my website. And if you just like to watch what I make, you can subscribe. Thank you. Have a great week.